Okay, so today we're going to look at the Hinterkaifeck farmhouse massacre. Now, please bear with me because this story is going to be a little longer than the others and it's so many twists and turns, it's crazy, but I promise bear with me because it's so interesting. Anyway, so the Hinterkaifeck farmhouse was located in a very, very remote area outside of a Bavarian town and about an hour's drive from Munich, Germany. And by the 1920s, the land and home belonged to 63-year-old Andreas Gruber, his wife, Ketzelia, who was 72, and along with their widowed daughter, Victoria, who also had her seven-year-old daughter, who was also named after her mother, bear with me, and her son, Joseph, who was two years old. They also had a live-in maid named Maria. But they, again, relatively kept a quiet life. They lived on a farm, you know, there weren't really that many people around them. But on the 4th of April, 1922, every single member of the family were found brutally murdered in two different areas of the house. Before the employment of the family's current maid, Maria, they actually had a living maid before. I couldn't find any pictures or her name, but she would complain like six months prior to the incident. She would complain about noises coming from the attic and she always had this weird feeling that she was being watched. And she had these uneasy feelings so much that she actually quit working for the family. But what's even weirder was that Victoria's father, Andreas, he also complained about hearing these sounds from the attic. And he heard them so much that he actually decided to go up and have a look. But he found nothing or no one. So sometime in around early March 1922, Andreas kept finding these random newspapers all over the property. And it was random because it was like a subscription-based newspaper, something that you had to pay monthly for. And Andreas knew that him and his family weren't going to be wasting money on that. So the next time the postman came around, he actually asked him, like, did you lose this? And the postman was like, well, no, I didn't lose it. I didn't misplace it. But the newspapers were just the beginning because other strange occurrences started taking place just a few days before the tragedy. For example, a set of keys weren't missing from the property, it just vanished. Poof! And during the winter, Victoria's father discovered a fresh set of footprints in the snow, leading out from what's known as the Witch's Forest, and it headed towards a broken, locked door in the farm's machine room. Later that same bloody night, the family yet again heard noises coming from the attic. Andreas checked, there was nothing and no one yet again. But at this point, he actually did decide to tell some neighbours about these incidences. And, you know, they offered him guns in form of protection. But for some weird reason, Andreas declined and the DLs just remained unreported to the police. Okay, so here's where the dates get a little bit tricky, but bear with me. So on March 31st, 1922, the farmstead's current maid, Maria, actually joined the family after the last maid quit by being escorted to the farmstead by Victoria's older sister. Now, it's speculated that Victoria's older sister is the last person to have seen every single one of them alive because we're not sure if they were killed on the night of the 31st of March or the next day on the 1st of April. So by this point, several days have gone by. Nobody heard nothing from the family and the farm was still running. When the postman came by, he also didn't see anyone, but the animals were clearly still being taken care of. They were being fed, watered, even the farm's Pomeranian watchdog was still happy and content. And people saw fresh smoke coming out of the chimney for the next three to four days, you know, during the evening, suggesting that they were all inside getting warm and cozy. However, the neighbours soon started raising questions because on the 1st of April, young Katzelia missed school and the whole family failed to show up to church and Victoria was actually a member of the choir. So this was really odd. By the 3rd of April now, Katzelia was still absent from school. The mail had now started to pile up, but people were still kind of like skeptical because the farm still seemed to be running but they knew it was really out of character for the family now on the 4th of april a man named there was another farm nearby and this farm belonged to lorenz schlittenbauer i hope i pronounced that right but he was actually the lover of andreas's daughter victoria and her father hated their relationship and forbidden them to be with one another. We'll get into that later. Lorenz hadn't heard at all in the last four or five days from Victoria. He decided to send his son and stepson over to the farm, you know, just to have a little peek. And when they came back and told him that they saw absolutely no one, 
Lorenz decided that he needed to take it upon himself to lead a search party. So at around 3.30pm, along with another farmer called Jacob, trigger warning because there's going to be some very graphic detail and images, but when they arrived, they first entered the barn and found four bodies. They were Victoria, her mother and father, and her seven-year-old daughter. They were just carelessly stacked up together and covered in hay. And over in the house, they actually discovered the bodies of two-year-old Joseph and the maid Maria. Their autopsies were conducted by Dr. Johann Baptist, and it reveals that Victoria's mother showed signs of strangulation, along with several blows to the head cracking her skull. Victoria's father was just drenched in blood. He had protruded cheekbones from ripped off flesh. Victoria herself also had a smashed skull. And and apparently she had nine individual star-shaped wounds. Now, it didn't specify where, but that's what I read. And the right side of her face was also clearly hit with a blunt object. Her seven-year-old daughter, Kazelia, was found with a shattered lower jaw along with gaping circular wounds. Again, didn't specify where, but they then had to go into the farmhouse because there was two bodies missing. They then discovered Maria, the maid, who was killed with blows to the head as well, over in her bedroom. And she was covered with sheets carelessly as well, while two-year-old Joseph, still in his cot, had one heavy blow to the face and he had one of his mother's dresses just thrown over him now experts believe that all the others died instantly but apart from victoria's youngest daughter now she was believed to have stayed alive for up to several hours after being stacked underneath the dead bodies of her mother and grandparents she was found with clumps of hair like torn out from her head and like still grasped in her hands when she was found diseased. And experts believe that was obviously due to severe shock. But for some strange reason, all of the victims' heads were then taken to Munich, Germany so that the skulls could be further examined. Now, again, they didn't really give much information as to why in particular it was only the heads. That would explain the whole Victoria having nine individual star-shaped wounds, I suppose. But less than a year after the murders and the investigations, the farm was just completely demolished. Like, nothing ever happened. The contamination before the police even got there was just... It was unreal. It was absolutely horrendous. So when they actually demolished the house, they revealed um, a hidden pickaxe or a matten in the attic, along with a pen knife that was apparently found in the hay barn. Now, could have this been the psycho's weapons? We'll probably never know now. But a hundred years later, dozens were arrested as the main suspect, but not one person was found guilty. And the Hinterkaifeck remains one of the Germany's most mysterious and unsolved crimes today. And you can still visit the property, but all you're going to find is just a memorial that stands just west from the original farm site. Guys, I feel like I made a really crazy, fantastic, mysterious discovery. Now, you know those like YouTube pages who find these random coordinates on like google earth and stuff like that now i never find these things i'm always like how do these people find these coordinates right and i'm not really one to be i don't really get urges to click onto you know coordinates but for some strange reason i really had like this thing that was just pulling me to look up these coordinates in regards to the Hinterkaifeck murders. Now, let's just have a look at what these coordinates actually friggin' show because I'm quite, I'm quite bewildered, I'm gonna be honest. Now watch what this thing does, guys. Right. Now, this is what really weirded me out. Okay, so this is where the original farm was located and then over here, is the memorial that I showed you guys in the last video. Now let's just click onto this, okay? This isn't really zooming in. What the hell? 
are these. No street view data is available. Every time I try and like, that's like five random figures, guys. I don't know about you lot, but for me, that was really weird because if we go over here now, this is where the memorial is located, right? Here, we can clearly see, we can clearly see that that's a vehicle, right? But let's zoom out. And remember that the memorial is actually located uh, about a mile or so from the original uh, farm. What are these? One, two, three, four, five, five figures. That is crazy. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if this is like real life spirits we're catching here. It would make sense, wouldn't it? And just, just remember, look, that, that coordinate, it's in the middle of nowhere, okay? Literally like in the middle of nowhere. What the hell are these things? What are these? It won't let me do a street view. This is the only kind of view, but it would explain, right, guys? Because if they said that all five of the other victims died straight away, right? And Victoria's youngest daughter was the only one who stayed alive for several hours. Like, could this be the first five victims spirits? Like you know, maybe searching for Maria, maybe her spirit didn't pass on or something. This is just big conspiracy for me, but I just thought that was absolutely mental. Mental. And again, here's the memorial from like a mile away or I don't know how many miles that is, but if you click on it, you zoom in, you can see a figure here, which it's very clear that it's a car, so. I just thought that these figures over here were like very mysterious, but let me know what you guys think.